Well, we have an exciting project for you. We're making a shoot bolt. Not a metal one, no. We're making it out of wood. In this case, oak. But you can make it out of whatever you like. Well, a shoot bolt is a very handy thing too. You can use it to hold a door or gate secure. Well, this one's actually for a customer. They want to buy one. I've got a customer. <gasps> Can't believe it. So you're going to need three saddles, one bolt and one knob. Yes. Well, you could call them cleats, but they're also saddles, I suppose. So first of all, we have to trim all the wooden components down to size. And I'm using my jet 10 inch to do that. And once we've got them all cut to size, to width, to thickness, etc. Well, we're going to run through the thicknesser. You can use a hand plane if you like. Or just sandpaper. So we're going to do a similar job. We're going to cut the shoot bolt to size, to length. In this case, this is a 300mm 12 inch shoot bolt. Oh. Now use my jig. On my razor armor sword. Now what a small 45 cut on the ends of the shoot bolt. Just to make it look nice, it just makes it more professional. So now we're making the cleats or the saddles. Now we're going to do a glue up saddle. You could make the saddles from solid wood, but we're going to be gluing ours up, as you'll see. And this is Cascomite powdered resin wood glue. Wear a mask because it's carcinogenic. Otherwise, just use some PVA. Then it's going to go outside, make sure it's waterproof. So we apply a little bit of glue and we put it onto the end of that piece of wood. I know it looks a bit long at the moment, doesn't it? Oh, I suppose it is. That doesn't matter, not at this stage. Use a spacer. And then we clamp the second piece of wood. Now using these little F clamps, they do a fine job of this. So now there'll be another spacer. You need to make sure you've got clearance. Otherwise, if it expands in the humidity, the shoot bolt that is, it will jam up solid. And you don't want to be in a jam, no. No, that won't be good. So there we go, we've got all three saddles, or cleats, all glued up, ready. Oh, that was quick. Is it dry already? No, I put it to one side, and now it is. So as you can see, oh, that looks a bit long. That's not kind of an angle of work, is it? No, no, no. So what we've got to do now, we have to cut them to length. It's just easier to do them as one thing. So you're dealing with one thing. And let's trim them and clean them up to, to length. So they're all cut to length. And now they're ready to be cleaned up on the sander. I'll be using a belt sander, a big linisher sander, which has all been done now. It was too dark in there to video. It was in the other barn. It's like a dungeon. It's got one, two, three cleats, a bolt and a knob. Oh, look at that. Oh, you get the idea. Oh, but how do you fix it to the door? Oh, keep watching and you'll find out. So first of all, we're going to clean it all up with this Katsu Palm router. It's like the little Makita router, but it costs 30 euros. It's cheap as chips. Now I'm using this mat, this dark black speckledy mat. It was actually a soundproof mat for a washing machine. I bought one and I cut it in half to make two mats. So I have two mats. Can't be bad. So there we go. We're cleaning it all up with this router. Really simple. The nice thing about the mat, it grips your work. There's no clamps required. Can't be bad, can it, eh? That's what I say. More than once, it seems. And this is just an eighth round over bit. About three millimetres radius. It does a fine job of cleaning up all the components and taking off the arises. So it's just nice and tactile. Then I use my hand sanding pad, which is one I made myself. I made a knob. And then I used a backing pad from, well, it's designed to use with an angle grinder and Velcro pads, you know, hook and eye pads. Works a treat, it does, as you can see. So I clean them all up, one by one. So that was a knob, that was a cleat, that's a cleat, and another cleat. Oh, and I'm also using my, well, my flat sanding pad that I made, which has these little screws poking through, which grips the mat or your bench. And that, oops, and that too can use the hook and eye sanding pads, you know, sanding discs, because that works a treat, as you can see. And all I've used is a bit of Velcro, 
stuck to a board. That's all it is, really. Simples. I've made a video on that. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And a card up above. So we sand it all up and sort of happy and satisfied that it is all smooth and no sharp edges and feels all lovely. Oh, oh I'm getting a bit too excited there. So now that's all done. One, two, three, yeah, three cleats. We make sure they're all lining up. Oh no, we're gonna mark it for the screws. That's what I'm doing. Ah, oh, look at that. What a clever idea. Line them all up like that and do it in one go. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And I'm using my air drill and a 10 millimeter plug countersink. What I mean by that is there's gonna be wooden plugs that cover the screws. Oh, you don't see the screw heads, they're just ugly. Yeah. So now we're going to fit the knob. Because you've got to have a knob. Yeah, it's all about the angle of the dangle. You've got to fit the knob. Oh, there it goes. There it is. Ooh. And the one screw from behind. That one won't have a plug. There's no need. Because you're not going to see it. It's going to be against the door. And using my little Stanley battery drill, we put a screw in. Just to hold it in place. And that with the glue, it will be perfect. Oh, I wonder what we're doing now. Oh, oh, I know. We're making the plugs using a plug cutter in the pillar drill. What a clever idea. And as you notice, I'm using scraps of wood. I don't throw anything away. No. And that's an old Clark pillar drill. I've had it some years. Oh, look at that. Oh, God, they're looking nice. But they ain't finished yet. No. What's going on in the background? Is he a pyromaniac? I think he may be. Oh my giddy on. Oh, ah. Where's the missus? Need to brand her next. Oh, baby. <laughs> so we just sand it off the old soot. And we get left with quite a neat little brand. Look at that. It can't be bad. Oh, what now? What now? Oh, I know. We've got to protect it. Got to have it protection. Oh. So there we go, we apply our linseed oil, and you can use boiled linseed oil. I have boiled my own to get rid of the moisture content in the linseed oil. But you can buy ready to use linseed oil if you like. It works a treat. So we've got our screws and we've got our plugs, and all's a good un. I suppose I'd better hand it over to him. I suppose he did make it. Okay, bugger. So there you go, some wood mongery. And that is how I make my 300mm wooden shoot bolts. And if you don't want to make one yourself, you could buy one from us via Etsy or our website Wally Cart. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please boot that old like button and maybe subscribe and the bell icon. Because then you'll get a warm fuzzy feeling in the pocket every time we upload another video. Full of tips and tricks. And little old projects. Can't be bad. Okay. Ta-ta.